Hello Lana, once again I'm glad to appear before you. We are studying economics. We are learning the principles of economics. And last time we introduced the topic demand, demand, and we defined the meaning of demand. We say that demand is the number of units that consumers are able and willing to purchase at a given price at a given period in time. So demand, that was the definition of demand. We also discussed the factors that determine demand of goods. We call them determinants of demand. We listed 10 of them and we discussed in detail. So today we want to uh, look at the law of demand. The law of demand. This is an economic law. Okay? An economic law. Remember we are studying principles and laws in economics. Our first law is the law of demand. And when I say economic law, what does that mean? What is the meaning of the term economic law? Now, an economic law is simply an economic hypothesis supported by many facts over a long period of time that can be used to predict economic behavior under certain conditions. So an economic law, an economic law, economic law is an hypothesis. An economic law is an uh, hypothesis supported by many facts over a long period of time that can be used to predict human economic behavior under certain conditions. It is a statement that shows certain cause of action expected under certain conditions from members of a group. So that is an economic law. It is a statement that shows certain cause of action expected under certain conditions from members of a group. So an economic law is actually an economic theory proved sufficiently over a long period. It is an economic theory, economic theory proved over a long period. So we are saying it is a theory, it is an hypothesis that has been proven over a long period of time, over a long period of time. So it is a conditioned statement about human economic behavior. It is a conditioned statement about human economic behavior. And a good example of an economic law is the law of demand. The law of demand is a good example of an economic law, okay, which you have said is an hypothesis. It is a theory, it is a statement that has been proven over a period of time. So what is this law of demand? Remember, in our discussion of the determinants of demand, 
those factors that determine demand of commodities. The first one we mentioned was price of commodities. And remember we say that when the price of a product is increased, then the quantity or units demanded of that product will be reduced. And when the price of a product is reduced, when you reduce the price of a product, then the demand for that product will increase. So that the higher, the higher the price, the higher the price of a commodity. the lower the quantity of that commodity will be demanded. And, and the lower the price of a commodity, the higher, the higher the demand. So that is the law, the law of demand states that the higher the price of a commodity, the lower the quantity will be demanded and vice versa. What is the vice versa here? The lower the price of a commodity, the higher the demand will be for that product. So that is the law, the law of demand. And we gave examples. We gave examples. And an example would be, say, airtime. Okay? If uh, Safaricom or or, or say Airtel company would announce that the 500 shilling airtime card, the 500 shilling airtime card, if there is an announcement that this card will, the price for this card will be reduced to say 10 shillings. If the price of such a card is reduced to 10 shillings, then we can predict the behavior of customers. You can also predict. If you hear now that, if you get information that the company has reduced airtime, the airtime that you can buy for 500 shillings has been reduced to 10 shillings, then we can predict the behavior of customers. In this case, customers are likely, almost everyone would want to buy it. That means the demand will increase. That's why we are saying here, the lower the price, the higher the demand. Okay? But if you increase the price of a commodity, that means that you are making it expensive for people to buy. People may not afford to buy it. So the demand for such a product, we reduce. That's why we are saying here that the higher the price of a commodity, the lower the quantity of that commodity will be demanded. So that is the law. It is an economic law. It is an economic theory that has been proven over a long period of time. Okay? A long period of time. If you are a businessman, you can also test it. Just give it a test. If you are a trader and you are selling commodities, just reduce your commodities by half and then observe what will be the behavior of customers. On the other hand, you can reduce to double. Just double the price of the commodities that you are dealing in. Then observe the behavior of the customers and you'll come to the conclusion that 
the higher the price of a commodity, the lower the quantity will be demanded. And the lower the price of a commodity, the higher the quantity will be demanded. So that is the uh, law of demand. The law of demand. That is the law of demand. But at this point, I also need to mention that there are exceptions to this law. There are exceptions to this law of demand. By exceptions, I mean there are other products that um, will not behave the same way uh, as you are discussing here. So there are exceptions to the law of demand. Exceptions to the law of demand. So what are these exceptions? What are these exceptions? You are talking about exceptions to the law of demand. There are certain products that defy this law. They defy this law. These are goods that don't obey the law of demand. You are saying that there are generally this is the law, but there are other commodities that do not obey this law. That's what we are calling exceptions. Exceptions. Exceptions to the law of demand. So we want to discuss these products that disobey this law. Number one is the luxurious goods or conspicuous goods. They may also be referred to as veblem. Veblem. The first one is luxurious. Luxurious goods or veblem goods or conspicuous goods. Luxurious goods. Luxurious goods are goods bought because of the value in terms of the social status. The higher the price, the higher the quantity demanded. They are unique in nature in that people in the society have attached some social value in them. Okay? They are um, goose bought because of their value in terms of social status. In terms of social status. So these goods disobey the law because the higher, <coughs> the more you increase the price of these goods, the more they are demanded in the society. The more they are demanded in the society. They are known as luxurious goods or veblem goods or conspicuous goods. And such goods include the expensive or luxurious cars, things like golden, golden watches, and so on and so forth. So those are luxurious goods. So that the higher you increase the price, the higher the goods are demanded. It's because of status. People don't buy them. They are, these are not basic needs. These are luxuries. Luxuries. Some types of cars, some uh, types of watches, expensive watches, golden watches, uh, diamond, diamond necklaces, and so on. Then the second uh, good that defies the law of demand is what we call inferior goods. Inferior goods. These are goods bought when consumer income is very low and price is not a major determinant of the quantity bought. As the consumer income 
increases even with the low prices the country demanded is low. Okay? You are talking about inferior goods. These are goods bought when consumer income is very low. And price is not a major determinant of the quantity bought. As the consumer income increases, even with the low prices, the quantity demanded is low. For example, goods like gideri, goods like cassava. Okay? These are inferior goods. They defy the law. Even when a consumer a consumer's income goes up and the, the price of these goods reduces, then the quantity demanded does not change. <music>